Hello beautiful people and welcome to the channel A Life After Narc. My name's Debbie and I talk about all things to do with narcissistic abusive and toxic relationships as well as looking at healing from them. And today's video, The Wedding Cake. I'm going to take a look at a video that I saw recently um, about a wedding cake and I think that this um, perhaps gives a little bit more insight and raises some red flags as to possible future narcissistic partners. Before I get into the video, if you enjoy it, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share with your friends and family. Really need to increase the subscribers of the channel. In order to monetize the videos, I need to have over a thousand subscribers. And at the moment I'm on 193. So I'd really, really, really appreciate your help. Thank you. So the wedding cake. Well, I saw this video. Um, I'm not sure if it was on TikTok or on YouTube. I can't remember. But it was the bride and groom at the reception. Um, they got married, obviously, and now they were it was time to cut the cake. So they stood together with the knife, cutting the cake, and it's a three tiered wedding cake. And as they're cutting the cake, the groom knocks his half of the cake off of the table and smashes it on the ground. And I was mortified. Can you imagine as the bride how much money, time and effort you have spent on your wedding cake, your wedding dress, your makeup, your hair, and this groom just ruins it like that in the blink of an eye. Now, I did do some further investigation into this and, and Googled smashing wedding cakes, and, and it does look as if it is something that does happen in the US quite a lot. I don't know why, and I don't know what the background is behind that. So if anybody watching can tell me, please pop it in the comments below. But for me, if something like that had have happened at my wedding, I would have left. I would not have continued with that marriage. I would have ended it there and then. Why? Well, as little girls, and I'm talking about um, heterosexual marriages here. So as little girls, when we are children, we imagine our wedding. We, we have our Barbie dolls, don't we? And we dress them up in their wedding clothes and we pretend we're getting married. And, and our wedding is planned in our heads many, many years before we meet our potential partner. Um, and we want the best wedding that we can have for the money, for what we can afford. And generally it is the bride's parents or the bride herself who pays for the wedding. She spent a fortune on the gown, on the makeup, on the hair. And now all of a sudden at the reception, her groom, her husband is going to take some wedding cake and smash it into her face. Yes, there's an element of fun behind that. All well and good. But while you're still at the wedding, while you're still with people, while you are still performing the rituals and rites that go along with a wedding. Don't forget, a wedding is a day where two people who love each other come together to join together in marriage to honour each other and state that they will stay together for the rest of their lives, as long as the love shall last, whatever the, um, the vows are. Smashing up part of that ritual, of that rite, just seems childish and narcissistic. So I thought afterwards, OK, so why would a groom possibly do this? Well because the bride is the one getting all of the attention. On the wedding day, it is traditionally the bride that gets the attention. The bridesmaids are constantly faffing around her, fixing her hair, her train, her dress, her, her flowers. Um, the mother of the bride is making sure that everything goes okay. The father of the bride is making sure that everything goes okay. So this this becomes a, it, it's a, it's very much centered around the bride and the groom just has to be there and show up and put the ring on the finger. Obviously, the, the groom can play a much more important role if he wishes, as I have seen in other weddings. I am a minister and I have conducted a number of hand fastings and I have seen many different kinds of, of weddings and hand fastings take place where the groom was more important than the bride or they had similar stature. But I'd love to know from you how you would feel if your groom 
if you were getting married or indeed are married or if this did actually happen to you in your marriage, how you felt, how it affected the rest of your marriage together. Are you still with that person or did they turn out to be a narcissist? Now, my own opinion, and this is just from my views of watching these videos, is that, yes, these specific men, these grooms, do appear to be narcissists. They want the attention turned on to them. They're groomsmen. Way shout, yay, you did this, you did that. You know, everybody's had a few too many drinks and now everybody's cheering that the wedding cake's been smashed. The wedding cake in itself represents... The elements, earth, air, fire and water, it is made from earth, from the corn, from the flour. When we mix the uh, cake mix, air goes into the mix, water goes into the mix and it is put into the oven where the element of fire is used. So this wedding cake represents all the elements which represent all the elements of the marriage. And this cake is a coming together of all of those elements to represent the two people in this marriage. But it seems that one person doesn't see that as being the case. They are the controller. They're the one that want to smash this tradition on the floor rather than accept this tradition in their new life. Now, Watching that video, the, the bride was obviously distressed and she did actually sit down on the floor and start to cry and the video cut off then. So I couldn't see any more of it. But I, I did go and watch a few other videos doing similar sorts of things. And I must admit, out of the plus minus 20 videos I watched, I only saw one woman take the cake and smash it at the groom first. So, and as I say, these were all um, American uh videos not necessarily english ones um but i do know that you know um wedding cakes represent so much more than just the coming together of the marriage here in the uk the wedding cake is cut up into slices and, and each guest receives a slice as a thank you and also to partake and share in this coming together of these two people so what I have noticed is that narcissists will try to steal the show at certain events, especially when they feel that they're not being paid attention to. Sorry, you can see my cat's tail here. She's she's being needy again. Um, so narcissists love to make a big deal of things in their lives when other people are the center of that attention. So, for example, it's a birthday party and the narcissistic person may well make a scene, perhaps break a glass or a bottle of alcohol, perhaps turn up drunk, perhaps um, cause an argument with somebody or with the person whose birthday it is themselves because they want to be the centre of attention. That is narcissism. They need to be the centre of attention. And they will do this by making you look minuscule. They will make you look as small as they possibly can. Um, they will do this at, at on holidays. They will do this at weddings, engagement parties, and even at funerals. And I know this for a fact, because the day of my father's funeral, my nex decided to show up and have a temper tantrum. And of course, I was to blame for the whole temper tantrum. Um, and he then said he was going to leave. He wasn't going to bother. And I should have responded and said, OK, go. But I didn't because I'm an empathic person. And I said, you loved my dad as much as I did. Stay, because I'm sure you want to say goodbye to him. I wish, I wish that I'd have done things differently that day. If only I could take time back and say to him, bye, don't be here. The one thing that I had said to him before the funeral was that if he was going to leave me to not sit next to me at the funeral, he had mentioned at some stage that he was thinking of leaving me. And so I said this to him. Him sitting next to me was like, he's not leaving me. We are going to sort this out. I had been so occupied with my father, my sick, dying father and my family for months prior to the, the funeral. Um, 
that I hadn't really seen my partner at the time, my ex-husband. Goblin, you're really being annoying now. So, sorry, they will try and overshadow your special day. They will try and spoil it in some way. Can you imagine, Goblin, sorry, can you imagine being that person whose wedding cake was smashed 30 years down the line, your wedding anniversary, and remembering that day when your wedding cake was smashed. If the groom can smash a wedding cake, what else can they smash? The, the funeral for me is marred by fake empathy, fake emotion, fake love, because it wasn't real. But I do know that my dad will always be with me. Um, and I do know that he's now happier that I'm on my own than with the ex. In fact, a few weeks ago, I was working in the garden and I had a playlist on, a Kate Bush playlist. And I was at the end of the garden and all of a sudden the music went from Kate Bush to country and Western music. My dad was a massive country and Western fan. Sit down. And... I thought, how on earth did this happen? So I went running over to my phone. I'm checking, I'm looking, this is not the playlist. And um, I tried to stop the song from playing and it played another song. And that was my dad saying, I'm here, I'm watching you, I'm with you. So while I remember the funeral and my next being sat next to me and holding my hand with his fake empathy, I also know the real things that count. And a wedding cake being smashed on the floor to be in your memory for the rest of your life while married to that person, is it really worth being with that person? If they can smash a cake that cost hundreds of pounds, what can they do to you? I'd love to hear your stories. Pop them in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Blessed be.